It is estimated that 70 million people across 45 countries will face acute food insecurity and will require emergency food assistance this year. One thing is for sure, we got to scale up. One thing is for sure, we cannot just continue going by a project approach. We have, as not only three of us, the three agencies, what I will call the whole development community, has to really look at ways. Obviously, we need to have much more synergy between the different actions. We saw colleagues from, uh, from different uh, uh, NGOs as well. But globally, we need to, to, to scale up. Food insecurity mm -hmm. in 2017 will be driven primarily by three factors. Most importantly, persistent conflict is disrupting livelihoods, limiting trade and restricting humanitarian access across many regions, including the Lake Chad Basin, the Central African Republic, Sudan, and the Great Lake region. A second important driver is drought, especially those driven by 2015 and 2016 El Nino, as well as the 2016 and 2017 La Nina. And finally, economic instability related to conflict, a decline in foreign reserves due to low global commodity prices and associated currency depreciation have contributed to very high staple food prices in Nigeria and some other countries. Um, in places where conflict uh, takes place, we should increase the resilience of people to conflict. We have to strengthen their sources of livelihood. We have to do programming which is more long-term than just humanitarian type of assistance. Uh, this will improve the livelihoods of people, but it will also contribute to sustainable peace. The, in cases of uh, economic slowdowns, we should follow the twin-track approach that FAO has always been advocating. That is, we should strengthen those productive sectors where the poor people, the hungry people, derive their livelihoods and at the same time strengthen social protection that will take the poorest of the poor and allow them to not fall into situations of hunger and malnutrition. 2017 marks the second consecutive year of extreme large needs, with the size of the acutely food insecure population roughly 40% higher than 2015. In addition to the sheer size of food insecure population, a persistent lack of access to adequate food and income over the past three years has left households in the worst affected countries with little ability to manage future shocks. The Farming Early Warning Systems Network, which is run by the United States government, says Evidence suggests that farming occurred in 2016 and could be ongoing in the Lake Chad Basin region. The situation is catastrophic. We estimate nearly 1.4 million children in Nigeria, Somalia, Yemen and South Sudan where famine was just declared to be severely malnourished and at imminent risk of death. The situation in the Lake Chad Basin had recently prompted a visit by the members of the United Nations Security Council. The council members, led by the United Kingdom ambassador to the United Nations, visited the internally displaced people's camp at the teacher village in Medjugorje in hard heat Burnu state, in the northeastern part of Nigeria. About half of the displaced persons living in the camp are children, with 379 of them infants. The council members joined a circle of survivors, many of whom were women whose husbands and children were killed by Boko Haram, and who are struggling to feed themselves and the remnants of families that they have left. We have had some very moving experiences in one of the camps for internally displaced people, meeting women and men who have been victims of Boko Haram and who are now victims of the humanitarian crisis. The numbers are shocking in terms of the numbers displaced, half a million children in severe acute malnutrition. And we are determined uh, that the international com community, the donors and the United Nations as the coordinator should step up response before it is too late. We are also convinced that the long-term solution to these problems is not military, it's not even humanitarian, it's development. It's thinking about the long term, it's putting the investments in, it's thinking about education, thinking about jobs, 
thinking about protection of civilians, thinking about rights, human rights, <coughs> women and girls' rights in particular, all of that has got to come together. And we stand with uh, the government of Borno and the government of Nigeria and the neighbours in tackling uh, all of these scourges in the Lake Chad Basin. On average, 56% of the population in countries affected by conflict live in rural areas where livelihoods largely depend on agriculture. Conflicts negatively affect almost every aspect of agriculture and food systems, from production, harvesting, processing and transport to input supply, financing and marketing. In many countries affected by conflict, subsistence agriculture is still central to food security for much of the population. Those countries are exporters of agricultural and non-agricultural commodities, and so their export training earnings have been going down, their economy suffer from this, but also the government revenues suffer from the decline in economic activity and export earnings. That means that uh, the countries have less um, means to import food and also less ability to support the safety nets and the social protection nets which countries use to um, protect their populations from hunger and undernourishment. Problems of acute food insecurity and malnutrition tend to be magnified when natural hazards such as droughts and floods compound the consequence of conflicts. The concurrence of conflict and climate-related natural disasters is likely to increase with climate change, as climate change not only threatens food insecurity and malnutrition, but can also contribute to further downward deterioration into conflict, protected crisis and continued fragility.